Welcome to another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Hales. Today, we have with us Mary Ann Pruitt. She is the CEO and president of Mosaic Media, a collection of media buying experts and creative strategists who negotiate, purchase, and monitor advertising space and airtime. She's here today to share some marketing wisdom gleaned from her extensive career in media strategy and how it relates to the ever evolving climate of media. Well, you could not have come at a better time, Marianne, because this is such a confusing topic for uh, most of us out there. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, what I'd like to know is, um, is traditional media dead? You know, how do you do a hybrid of digital and traditional together? Or now that newspapers and magazines are kind of going by the wayside, uh, is it still worth investing advertising in there? What we find is a traditional media is not dead. Actually, during the last 18 months, we've seen an uptick in local uh, news and local uh, traditional platforms that we've seen just happen because of the pandemic and various things that have happened over the last 18 months. People wanted local information. So we've actually seen media consumption behaviors increase in our traditional platforms, more on the TV and radio side than on the print side. What we see on the evolution of print is it becoming very trade specific publications. That's where we're finding that traditional media is not dead in the print side. Of course, you have your outdoor and you have your various things. For, for your audience, um, the more smaller the market you are in as a doctor and as a medical provider, the more uh, you should be looking at local radio and local TV news specifically during this time frame, uh, But then going into your second question of how are we looking at it with digital, there's quite a bit we should be doing uh, specifically in the medical field with whichever kind of practice you're doing uh, to make sure that you have that mix and that omni-channel approach so that your traditional and your digital are working together. What do you think about advertising on various social media sites? It's a really important place. The one thing that's interesting in today's world and market is that we are able to have that omni-channel approach with a budget-friendly option, uh, but we're also able to target our target demographics. And now we're getting into la la layers of behaviors, not just the demographic. So we're no longer just targeting a, a woman that's 25 to 54 years old. We're actually able to target the woman that's 42 years old that is looking for a new dentist for her family or we're able to target various behaviors that go along that with that medical decision. Um, on the social platforms, what we saw in the last 18 months was our older audiences turning to social more than they ever have before. Uh, what we should have seen as a 10 year evolution actually took place overnight, where our old, older audiences were consuming social media to get their news, to get their information. So this is actually a platform now where we can get older generations and older audiences um, in our ad spend is on the social platforms. That's really great. Now, when a potential client comes to you who's like totally uninitiated and says, mm -hmm. you know, I have not ever done marketing before, I have no clue as to the budget that I would need to set aside for that. What would you tell that person? The first thing we do is we start and we look at a basic, basic model and we go back and we try to make this as simple as possible. Start with who you want to target in your audience. Who's the audience that you want to get a hold of? Are these um, people looking for a new medical provider? It are these individuals that maybe have a specific pain point that they are trying to treat? Uh, who is it that you're trying to target? And the next steps that we go into that are what are the tactics that we want to put behind that? And then what are the budgets that you want to put? It's media right now. Like you said, you started the show by saying how complex it has become. 
Paid media is confusing. It is um, very expertise, and we try to take the confusing out of it. That's our goal, and that's our plan uh, to work with clients, is to actually make this as simple as possible. Let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. We can do the back end, and anybody who does the placement and how they handle things, we can do the bidding. We can do all those things, but we can help you also develop those tactics and those plans and those strategies for reaching the patients that you're looking for. You have a program called Media Buying 101. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I like to go back to basics. So this is something that um, when people come to us, I talk to them quite a bit and I've been published using this Media Buying 101 is let's look at the basics. What are we doing? What are we, um, what are, again, back to your goals. What are your goals with your media buys? Let's look at then what, omni-channel options do we want to have? How much of traditional do we want to have? How much of digital do we want to have? Number one, you're going to start with who's your target audience. Number two, you're going to look and see, okay, what are behaviors that go within that target audience? Number three is where are they going to be best reached? Then we figure out the creative that goes with that. I think there's a there's a misnomer that you have to have all your creative figured out that the messaging needs to be amazing and that you need to figure that out first and then head in that direction and then you can figure out where you're going to place it and really the two need to go hand in hand you need to be looking at who your target audience is first where they're going to be reached and then figure out the creative side of how they're going to be reached and with what message so the when you take that simple approach and take a step back it really is not that difficult and it's not that hard. Um, a lot of people in media try to make it a lot harder than it is, but really, if you just take these simple steps and you're able to head into the direction of what you wanna head into and you're able to actually identify who your target audience is first and then figure out where they are, then you go from there. But that's how we, that's how we help you. For professionals like us, we try to help you find out exactly where your audience is and then we develop that plan to reach that audience. A moment ago, you said that uh, being on local TV is very helpful. How does one get on local TV? So a way that you do it in, for individuals that are interested in being local TV, local radio, or in any digital space, one of the best ways is to get a hold of a media buying individual like what we do, um, because it's now media reps, you can go directly to the channels. Uh, you're not going to get the best rate. You need it to be negotiated for you on your behalf and individuals like us and companies like ours, we negotiate those for you. We negotiate it down to where it needs to be. Um, and then also you don't have to worry about which channel am I on, which channel am I not on. We have all the data sets that show us which channels you should be on and which channels you shouldn't be on and what is a good cost and what is not a good cost and what is a good schedule and what's not a good schedule. So the first step is to contact somebody like us we then put your budget together for you. We work with you on that. What kind of budget are you looking for? Who are we trying to target? And then we go into that specific market. So we do placement in all 50 states and we work with television, radio and digital platforms all throughout the country. So we have experience in all 50 states and being able to do that placement. So we're able to contact the stations, negotiate on your behalf, Put the, put the contracts together and actually then carry out the contract so you don't have to do it either. Um, that's probably the, the easiest way to do it because when you're, when you're running a medical practice, the last thing you need on your plate is to also manage the media buys and your advertising. That's a lot on your plate. That's a lot to do. So it's best to outsource that. I agree completely. Does anybody still listen to radio? They do. Well, like you know what's so interesting? We found during the pandemic, actually, younger audiences started listening to local radio as if it was a new platform. They started listening to it like, because they wanted to know what the, the counts were in their, off, in their town, what the mandates were. They wanted to see these things. So they were, they were like, oh, my word, local radio gives me information that's about my town, which is so funny because those of us who have consumed it for years <laughs> have known that this is what happens. But we saw this happen in younger generations. So just like we saw the older generations jump to social media, the younger generations, did the, they went to traditional platforms. And it's so fascinating to see how this has shifted and changed. Um, and they've stayed there because we've actually created consumer habits out of this. Uh, so it's very interesting to see. And, you know, there are still elements where you have 
the digital form of radio as well, not just over the air. And you may be consuming the local radio station, but maybe in a different way than it's been consumed before in a more digital platform. And so I think it's it's really important. Some of the things that we're able to do, and if we're looking at medical practices, your paid search is really important. Make sure that you are doing your paid search in the digital space. That's very key. Um, and then it, back to the social media side, your paid ads on social are important as well. But you should be looking at, there's a few tactics and a few uh, things in the digital space that will work with your traditional space. And you should you should be looking at both, not just one. So when you say uh, the media has changed with uh, the pandemic, mm -hmm. are you referring to younger audiences discovering radio or is there something else involved here? So we've seen consumer habits change. We are seeing more streaming. We're seeing more podcast consumption. We're seeing, like I said, the older generations shifting to social media uh, and getting their news that way. We're seeing the younger generations rediscovering platforms that have been around for hundreds of years that they didn't even know existed. Those of us who've been in media forever, it's like, yeah, that, you know, we've had that since the 60s, but okay, we've had that before then. So, uh, but new, new consumption in that. We also, uh, most recent study that just came out shows us that the younger demographics are on social and digital platforms to kill time as opposed to consume news, where our older generations are there to consume news and to get information in that platform. Uh, so it's really interesting along those lines. So um, we've seen the shift. The tactics also in the digital space that we're able to use are a little different. And what we're able to really carry out in the digital space is quite, is quite interesting as well. Uh, now, in terms of the evolution of media consumer habits, um, are you uh, in, uh, discuss are you discussing a podcast by that, or is there something else yeah. that uh, we're missing? So podcasting, we saw podcasting consumption go through the roof. We just saw an uptick in that. We've also seen uh, over the top television go through the roof. So that's the your streaming services that you're seeing more and more uh, people consuming TV unless it's local news and even local news, they're streaming it too, but uh, they are seeing, they're seeing it in more of a streaming platform. So that, that goes into a um, programmatic way of placement and ad buys of how you're getting into those videos. We saw to add to that as well, we saw video consumption is now becoming a key, key thing in our advertising world. Uh, how are we doing not just display ads, but how are we delivering a video to individuals? So whether it be pre-roll or mid-roll, um, you're, you're doing your video portion of it is very important as well. Are you helping doctors' offices create their videos? So we do uh, consult in that side. Usually we bring in another part. We, we hang out in the media space. That is our expertise. But we absolutely, depending on which market you're in, we absolutely can refer you to somebody or help you with figuring that piece out for sure. Um, and what would be the best tactic, but the best message to go with that tactic is what we can help with. Okay. What are two tips that you could give today to our audience to help them implement a program of marketing and media usage that they may not have done before? So I would actually want to show you some, one thing that I think is important for medical practices that we can do, and it's a unique tactic to use um, specifically, is called conquesting. It's in the digital space where you're targeting your competition, actually, cool. and you're able to then get, uh, as they're in walking in the door of your competitor, we're tagging them to retarget them to, with our, your ad and you're able to do that. So that's a tip in the digital space of something to think about. Um, I know medical practices can be very, no matter which field of medical you're in, very competitive and you're having to find ways to stand out. So if there are ways that you can conquest and actually bring forward your ad when someone's been in your competitors or near your competitor, that's something that we've seen much success with. Um, making sure to, like I said, your paid search is really important. Making sure that you are showing up at the top. I know I heard one of your episodes actually that was talking about if you're showing up on page 25, that's not going to work. You need to be showing up at the top of the page. You need to be showing up at the very beginning and making sure that your 
your paid searches there and making sure that your website is ready to handle that. Um, but you can also add conversion tracking to that paid search and that you can track the calls that you're getting off of it. So you're not just seeing if a lot of times you'll, people will say, oh no, it's a waste of money. Yeah, I'm showing up at the top, but I can't track it. Now in digital space, we can track it. We can put conversion tracking on that and we can see and track those calls to see how many calls you're getting off of that, um, which is really, really a neat tactic as well. So those are two things, but I cannot, cannot emphasize enough that you have to go back to the basics of remembering who your target audience is and build a strategy about reaching that target audience and building a strategy. It's sometimes, it seems so basic, but it really is the most important step that's often skipped. Well, that makes total sense. So for our listeners out there that are saying, you know, I think that I'm going to just jump in both feet forward and I want to speak to Marianne Pruitt. Yeah. Uh, how can they reach you? Yeah, they can reach me directly on the website. If you go to mosaic.agency forward slash contact, that comes straight to my email and I'll be able to reach out to you directly. So that's mosaic.agency forward slash contact. And yeah, we're happy to help. And even just, if you want to just pick our brains, we're here to help. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming here today. I'm sure my listeners have learned a lot. Well, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. This has been another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors with your host, Dr. Barbara Hales, speaking with Miriam Pruitt. Till next time.